So the cleaning of my sewing machine is well overdue, so I'm going to go through it with you today. I really um, have to admit I don't do it as often as I should, so this could be interesting when I take it apart. In terms of the materials I'm going to use, on the left, an unusual one, I've got a hair dryer, then just a, a soft cloth, my sewing machine manual, the little tool bag that came with the machine. You might need a screwdriver for yours, but certainly the one that undoes the screws on the plate of your sewing machine. I've also got the little brush that comes with it, some Q-tips or cotton swabs, and some sewing machine oil. So, let's get started. So first thing first would be to get the manual for your sewing machine and just read what it says in there about basic user maintenance. Sometimes it'll tell you um, how you can change the lamp, for example, in case that the light goes out or you need to change the bulb. It will show you what screws you can undo and what areas of the cover you can take off if necessary. Or it may be like mine. I've got a, a brother computerized machine and in fact almost nothing of mine is user maintainable. So mine just tells me to wipe the machine down with a soft cloth and to make sure that the area under the bobbin is lint free. There's no way I can change my own bulb for example, there are no covers or anything I can take off on mine. So do check your manual first of all. Uh, secondly, safety. We need to um, move our machine to a nice stable table because obviously it's heavy. So I've got mine on a like a countertop so it's I can use it uh, while I'm stood up. Is it the right height for me? And also, very important, turn your machine off and for goodness sake unplug it. You don't want to be doing anything like removing covers or removing the throat plate on your machine and getting your hands down in there only for you to accidentally um, turn the machine on and suddenly uh, you've got an, um, an electric shock or a needle through your finger. So take your machine, turn it off and remove the electricity cord. So I'm just going to start at the top, same as you do when you clean your house. I've got a soft cloth and I'm just going to make sure that I give everything a dust over. Pay attention up at the top here where the the bobbin winder is. Make sure there's no dust there. Check underneath, make sure you've got no threads caught around here that you might need to get rid of. Mine's looking awfully dusty, so I'm going to give it a good dust over with a soft cloth. And that really is all the exterior needs. Now I can remove, start to remove all the takeaway part that's my table oh dear and immediately under here I can see that this is grubby this is where all the lint collects at the end of my projects under there so that needs to come off okay and I'm going to work more on this area at the top of the machine here some of yours may have a clip in which case this part will swing open some of them may have a screw hole in the side and your usual manual will tell you to undo the screw and you can open this. Mine is fixed, it can't be opened at all, so I can't get to any of these areas in here very easily to dust them. So this is where my um, hair dryer is going to come in handy because I'm actually going to switch my hair dryer to cold and I'm just going to blast a little bit of air down through these channels up here. So if there's any dust in there, it's going to blow the dust all out. You might see the cat suddenly go, uh, he doesn't like the, the sound of this, so he might suddenly dash off. Yeah, Scruffy didn't hang around for long. So this is given this uh, a good dust out here and at least blown the dust out in a downward motion so that any dust will fall down here because I can't get to it. But there is one more thing up here we can do and I'm just going to get a scrap of fabric and we can clean out this channel here. So I've just taken a scrap piece of fabric and folded it in half so that I get a nice pressed edge and I'm going to open the tension discs all the way up here. So I'm going to set mine to zero to open up the tension discs and I can run this piece of fabric through my thread channel just here and just give it a little run up and down through that thread channel just to help get rid of any lint that's built up in here from our thread going through there constantly. 
and then here if I turn the hand wheel this is where the little hook part goes up and down so I'm just also going to run my bit of fabric through there too because I can't get in here you may be able to on yours but I can't get in so a little run of fabric up and down like that it's really going to help dust that out I think Once again through the tension discs and the thread channel. Okay, and I think I am done. Now I can take a look in under here. If I turn the machine over this way, if I hold it up you can have a look. I could shine a light up in here, get my specs on and just have a look. And yes, I can see now there's some dust and lint collected here that I've blown down and collected from the top is now here so I'm just going to get in there with my brush and just pull those little bits out so I can just see now in here I've got all little bits of fluff the good thing about these sewing machine brushes they somehow seem to collect all the little bits of fluff rather than brush it away so I can just run my brush in here and collect all these little bits um, take them out. Most of it's been blown out or taken out by the um, fabric I was running through there. So really that's about it. So I will carry on with the rest of the clean then I'll come back and put a little bit of oil up in there later on. So now let's get down to the nitty gritty and take a look and see what we've got in here. So first of all I'll take off my bobbin cover. I'm going to take off everything that's removable. So I'm going to take off the foot, unscrew. This is apparently the little screwdriver, whoops, there we go, that came with my machine. Very odd looking things. So if you have something like that and wonder what it is, it's the screwdriver. So take off my needle. Put that safely to one side. You should really get yourself a little saucer or something like that and put all of your bits in or put them in a cup so nothing's going to get lost. And take off a little adapter there. Everything we can get out our way is a good thing. And now I've got two screws, one here, one at the back. As you can see, the biggest problem that I suffer with here is rust. So my screws are a little bit rusty. But nonetheless, it all still works for now. I'm going to take those screws out. Same with this back one. Can be a little bit fiddly. It's a bit in the way. Okay, screws are out. Now mine's got a couple of little plastic catches here and another one here. And I have to just push on those catches and then pull the plate forward. Ah, there we go. Then it comes up and I can take it away. It's also in two separate parts if I wanted to. I could take the plastic off and I can take the metal off separately. There we go. But they seem to just kind of stay stuck joined together. So I'll do it like that. So that comes off. And then we got our first look inside. Yeah, I should have cleaned that a long time ago. That's looking pretty grim down in there. So let's get started. So the first thing you might want to do before you take any of this out is to just snap a picture. I'm going to do that. Just to make sure that if you take out this bobbin case that you remember the way that it goes back in later on. Especially if you get interrupted or start doing this and then come back another day. Um, and then all of the dust and lint that you see down in here, the build up from the thread and all the fabric and things as the needle goes up and down through, we need to dust all these out. Now for mine, my the bottom under underneath here isn't removable. If yours is removable, then you could just kind of brush it down, remove the bottom and take it all away. But mine isn't. If I brushed or blew mine inside, it would be permanently stuck inside the machine. So I'm going to use my brush. And it seems to be kind of static, you see, and it picks up the dust. So I'm going to use it to pick up all these bits of dust. 
actually pull them out the machine and away and try not to dust them down inside because if they're down inside that'll be making it actually harder for me to get them out. Ooh, look at these big dust bunnies. And up at the top here where you've got your feed dogs, my, um, my tool comes with a little pokey stick on the end and I can actually get that in there and pull out these great big chunks that seem to sit between my feed dogs there. And so I'll carry on just picking up all this fluff with the brush, taking it away a little bit at a time, making sure I'm not pushing th things down in as far as I can. And once I've collected a certain amount from around the top here, I can now take out my bobbin case. Yeah, that's pretty bad, so I'll give this a good brush off. But I can also use my cloth on this one and just clean it off with my cloth. Too. It has a funny little pad, like um, a little velvet pad just here on the side, so I'm going to make sure that that's all cleaned off too. Get my cloth down in there. You have the little tension disc just here where you pop your, whoops, where you pop thread through, so I'm just making sure there's nothing caught in there. Everything is good. Clean underneath too in all the little nooks and crevices because anything that we miss this time will only be here waiting for us next time. Okay, so now I can put this little bobbin case to one side and I've got a huge amount. Look at the size of this. It looks a bit like candy floss, cotton candy. Um, I should be utterly ashamed of myself. So that is coming out. And so I'm just gonna carry on picking up all these little bits of fluff brush makes it nice and easy to pull them out. Now you can also get little attachments for your sewing machine, um, for your vacuum cleaner and they're designed for use with computer keyboards and things like this. It's like a little um, suction brush that you can stick on the end. I've never used it to clean the machine because I don't have one but I've um, read about people who do and I think that would also be a good solution rather than brushing dust down inside to get one of those little computer keyboard sucky things and use that on your vacuum cleaner to suck the dust out. What you really don't want to do is use something like canned air and blow down inside the machine because canned air, um, as much as it seems dry, actually has a little bit of moisture in it and by doing that you're blowing more moisture and things down inside and trust me rust is a problem um, for some people with sewing machines, certainly is for mine so I won't want to make it any more damp down in there than we need to. So I'm making a good start but I can see I've still got lots to do. So I'm going to carry on and I'll come back when it's looking a lot cleaner. So once you think you have the worst of everything out, just turn your hand wheel on the sewing machine and you'll notice that the case here goes round and it might just reveal, oh there's a little bit there that you missed as it goes round and you see this part here this goes up and down. So again, just have a look and see if there's any little bits of fluff that you missed earlier on. Give everything a few revolutions. And once you're happy, then we're good to start thinking about some oil. I bought this uh, sewing machine oil. Comes with this great big, very strange long tube. So I don't think I'm gonna need the whole tube on mine, but I can take that little top off and I'm going to be a bit more liberal with my oil than you may be with yours just because rust is such a big problem here. So I've got some of these cotton swabs um, and I'm just going to drop a little bit of oil on the end. And I'm going to go around on the inside of mine and just give it a little light oiling in all these places because it is very prone to rust here and as I do that it'll also clean up you see the cotton swabs getting a little dirty so as I do that it'll lubricate it and give it a little clean at the same time turn it 
turn that round again, get to a different area. Okay, try and keep everything nice and free flowing, sewing smoothly. Okay, so if you have any spaces in your um, manual that tell you to apply a drop of oil, by all means do that. I'm just going to apply a couple of drops where my screws go because I know those have a tendency to be a little tight sometimes, they get a little rusty. So I'm going to apply a drop in each of those little holes there. Just a tiny little bit. Also here, anywhere you have metal on metal, then those are good places to add just a little drop of oil. Don't go crazy. And as I say, I'm doing a little bit more on mine than you may need to do on yours. Okay, that's looking good. I'll just put another drop in that centre. Wipe it around with a swap. Now what I don't want to do obviously is make everything in here too oily. So once all of my sewing, um, my clean is complete, I'm just going to turn the machine back on and run some scrap fabric through the machine. Just in case there's any little drops of oil anywhere which are going to be picked up. There shouldn't be, but I don't want anything to end up on any of my projects. So I'm using my swab now just to go over the places that I've oiled, make sure that everything is smoothed about rather than sit in any pools and pick up anything which is a little bit too oily. But now I think I'm happy. Oh, a few little bits of lint still up at the top just there. Okay, and now I'm good to go. So I want to put my bobbin case back in. I might need to refer back to your picture if you need to remember how that goes. That's, that looks good for me. So once you've got your bobbin case dropped back in, just turn your hand wheel, make sure everything looks like it's going smoothly. Okay, that's fine. Now we'll start putting things back together so I can slide my plate on. Okay, pop my screws back in. My last job is just to revert back up to this top area. I'm using another cotton swab and this area here, we have a metal on metal area. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of oil to that and run my hand wheel just to give that a little bit of lubrication. And I've got my specs on now so I can get my head down in there and just make sure that I'm rubbing my uh, little oil up in there over any of those parts that might be a little rusty. Wouldn't hurt for my machine to also give a little spruce up on some of these other areas and then I'm just going to wipe them over in a minute with that soft cloth and get rid of any excess oil. Hopefully try and keep the uh, corrosion on mine to a minimum. So that's everything now done. My machine has had its spruce up. So how often should you do it? It depends on how often you sew. I would say once a year is definitely not enough. The uh, probably once a month, I mean even more than that. If you're doing something like the rag quilt, all this fluff here, um, all this is from the rag quilt project that I sewed just recently. I can tell just by the colours in it. So if you're making something with flannel or something that's fluffy like that or it sheds a lot like felt, then maybe obviously do it more often than you would if you're just um, using a regular quilting cotton. So thank you very much for watching and uh, cleaning your machine hopefully with me. If you haven't changed your needle in a while, maybe when you put your needle back in, treat your machine to a shiny new one too. Hope to see you over again at So So Easy one day soon. Thanks for watching.